We've got 7,000 miles of trail and just about all 7,000 miles has got a groomer on it at some point in time during a given week or sometime during the season. There's a major difference between a well-maintained trail system and a non-maintained trail system for the experience for the rider. When we first started riding up here, we used to tow chain link fence. We threw a couple cement blocks on it and we'd drag that around on the trails that we made to groom it ourselves. Just about the full range of equipment that we use in the state of New Hampshire and trails in New England is out here today for people to try. A lot of times it's like test driving a new car. You want to see what it does compared to what you're driving. Is it more functional for the operator? Are the controls in better locations? Are the controls simplified? They really have done a nice job as far as making it comfortable and stuff like that makes a big difference when you sit there for four or five hours at a time. These groomers and drags, you know, all have a science behind them. That drag is taking that trail that's beat up in the moguls and all that snow and it's, it's churning it up, it's heating it up, it's putting air and moisture into the mixture. Then that pan on the back lays it down flat. And if no one rides on it for an hour or two and it freezes, it makes an ideal trail. Oh, most everybody that rides loves the grooming. We don't get paid, but it's pretty fun. It's a heated cab, it's comfortable, you can take a passenger with you. We see a lot of wildlife, you see a lot of deer, a lot of moose, things like that. Most riders only know one thing, is the trail smooth or not smooth? There's hours and hours of work that goes into preparing every trail before that rider hits that tabletop surface. Uh, and a lot of money is spent, you know, these things use five to seven gallons of diesel fuel per hour. They cost anywhere, the big ones, you know, $150,000 to $220,000, you know, that a volunteer club is getting a grant for and taking a loan out, and then they're paying it back with their grooming hours. There's two things the average rider can do. One is join a club. You know, the dollars that they spend to join a club, stay with the club to augment those trail maintenance costs. You know, we do give clubs grants to offset some of their grooming costs, but it's only a portion. You know, they're expected to come up with that other portion on their own through fundraising and club memberships. But then the other one is get involved. You know, the people that truly care about the sport, truly care about their trails, need to try and give up a couple of hours to help it if they can.